Hi, I'm Courtney and here's Joey and today we are making a video about Joey's abdomen draining procedure. See his big belly? So I'm taking him to the vet so you guys can actually see what's done. If you don't like medical things, then you may want to skip this video. Mwah. It's a 16 gauge IV catheter. It would be big enough for bigger than human use. This would be large dog sized or even small horse sized. And I'm using a number 10 blade to make fenestrations. From the Latin word finestra, which stands for window. Yeah, I had some coffee not long ago. It's my comfort food. Like banana bread? It, yeah. Banana, banana bread and coffee. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, finish drill. This should do. All right, you're gonna want this up close, right here. We're using Joey's caudal right abdominal wall. We've had good luck on the right. We've had some mixed luck, mixed success on his left. I'm using that. We've just kept this shaved. I'm gonna pull up somebody wall, pinch it up. And I'm going to go through his belly wall just into the inside. Now I'm going to advance the catheter a little bit beyond the tip of the stylet inside. And we're going to go ahead and advance it into his belly. In other words, the sharp part is inside the catheter. Fluid begins flowing. And we take a sterile urine collection container. <clears throat> and let his belly flow and sometimes with a little help I can increase the flow rate as so comes out two or three times as fast at this point we just collect occasionally we may have to readjust and if we have to do that we'll show you that Can you tell everybody who you are since I didn't introduce you like I should have? Sure. <laughs> so this is Dr. Dan. Okay, I'm Dr. <laughs> Dan Johnson, Indian and Exotic Animal Care, Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, I am a uh, board certified specialist in small exotic mammal practice through the American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. This is yep. good. Yeah, we've got uh, almost 100 mLs in record time. Yeah. Joey has dilated cardiomyopathy. And of course, uh, half the heart, the right side, right side sends blood to the chest. The other side, the uh, left side, sends blood out to general circulation, oxygenated blood, which then becomes oxygen depleted out in the muscles and organs and then has to come back to the right heart. Well, what I assume is happening because we have fluid collecting in his abdomen is that his symptoms happen to be a result of poor right heart function relative to the left and his right heart is not working well sending blood onto the lungs and as a result we have a log jam of blood in his body out in his periphery part of his peripheral body is his abdomen and so the path of least resistance for some of that blood pressure is for fluid to leave his blood vessels out into his abdominal cavity as ascites 
And so that's what we are, that's what our ferret soup here is, is <laughs> uh, tissue fluid, namely in his belly, which the name for that is ascites in this case. Mm -hmm. It's a transidate. It's uh, coming out as a result of blood pressure, as, a res uh, as opposed to being produced by a tumor or some other means of being pumped out and produced. It's kind of, or as a way of thinking, it's blood without the blood cells or relatively few, few blood cells. It's the blood without the blood cells, uh, it's the tissue fluid and blood without the blood cells that accumulates in your belly. And there's always some of this in a normal abdomen, but this is excess. This is excessive, very excessive. To the tune of, when we're doing this, about a third of Joey's total body weight comes out as fluid on one of these episodes. And, and then it gradually yeah. builds up again over a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Two and a half to three weeks. Mm -hmm. That's how often I'm bringing him here for this. Mm -hmm. And it greatly helps his quality of life. So we'll keep doing it as long as he's happy. And like the day after we do one of these, he goes from not using the stairs to using the stairs again. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And he's running around much better. It's almost immediate. Uh -huh. Now, when Joey first came down with heart disease, you really noticed it because he had an increase in respiratory rate. I can't see how that would have been right heart. I think that was left heart at the time. Yeah. But everybody involved in Joey's case has remarked on how he doesn't cough, he doesn't have fluid in his chest. Mm -hmm. His presentation of heart disease is kind of unique in that aspect because it is, his signs really seem to be right hard. Fluid accumulating in some part of his body as opposed to left heart, which would be fluid accumulating in the lungs. Mm -hmm. Look at this. <laughs> Lovely. Now, I'll just show this once, but when we don't have much in the way of flow at rest. Sometimes, just for contrast, I'll put this, sometimes this helps, and that is pulling it out halfway so that we, presumably, there's omentum tissue stuck to this catheter because fluid has been coming out and carrying some omentum with it. I'm gonna come out this far. I see omentum peeking out. I'm gonna push that back in his belly Hopefully we have unplugged some of those ports and fluid will flow into our cup again. And it is not a dramatic change. Mm -hmm. And we may have enough fluid. If you want to weigh that cup and see if we're close to 300. And I'm gonna adjust one more time. We'll see how we do here. Adjusting and hopefully moving momentum away from the catheter ports. Redirecting. And then again, putting some, there we go. And it's a little pinker this time. Presumably because, okay, good. Presumably because the ports where I've just made some rough edges, those are probably rubbing against the hole in his abdominal wall and making some capillary bleeding occur. It's also possible that this catheter, because it's not completely smooth, is causing some abrasion there inside his belly and some bleeding. Mm -hmm. But we're really stopping mm -hmm. getting a lot of fluid. Mm -hmm. And he came in a little early, as you said. So I'm just going to explain what momentum is. Momentum is kind of a fluid, I'm sorry, it's a flimsy tissue in the abdomen that acts as a patch. If an animal is bitten in the abdomen or shot and there's a leak, 
that leaking actually pulls this tissue over as a patch. And so it's one of nature's natural remedies for an injury. Okay, we got just a little more fluid coming out and I kind of think we're reaching a stopping point because when I do get fluid, it's just a drop or two and it's got more blood in it than we mm -hmm. usually see. So we're gonna pull the catheter out and he may continue to leak for a day, which is a bonus, that's bonus fluid loss. I'm gonna pull this out and hopefully not have any momentum attached to it as we pull away from his belly. Just gonna hold that there. And that should do it. All right. So now he's just going to start waking up slowly. And I will keep you updated on how he's doing. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Welcome. <laughs> So before the draining, he was 1,364 grams. And afterwards, he is now 1,034 grams. So he essentially lost, we removed about 330 grams or cc's from him. He's still waking up. So he's still groggy, so it's okay. I'm gonna warm him up. This is normal. Yes. Yeah. Starting to wake up. Oh, there we go. How are we doing? Good, just waking up. Here he comes, we just got home a few minutes ago. Look at that boy running like a champ. You feel better? I just wanted to take a moment to thank Dr. Dan and everybody at Avian and Exotic Animal Care. They always take wonderful care of Joey. So I highly recommend them if you have an exotic pet and you live in or near the Raleigh-Durham area.